it feels like there are a lot of bidding strategies inside of Google Ads. How do you know which one is right for you in your business? In today's video, we're going to talk about maximized conversion value bidding, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on if I think it's a good strategy for you to use inside of your account. That sounds interesting. Let's discuss. Hey friends, my name is Scott Redgate and I'm passionate about helping small businesses make more and spend less and show you that you have everything that you need to manage your own online marketing campaigns. In today's video, we're going to talk about maximized conversion value bidding and I'm going to share with you my thoughts on if I think it's a good option for you inside of your account. All right, so let's hop into the slides. All right, so we are going to talk about maximize conversion value bidding and make sure you stick around to the end because we're going to discuss the set a target return on ad spend, the optional setting, and I'm going to give you my recommendation on if you should go ahead and do that. So maximize conversion value bidding was introduced at Google Marketing Live in 2019. So what is it? Well, maximize conversion value automatically looks to bring in the highest revenue or lead value for your budget. So there aren't a lot of bells and whistles when you set this up. So when you're in the campaign settings, um, it asks you, what do you want to focus on? And the option is conversion value, and there may be some other options there as well. So this is a form of smart bidding and smart bidding is essentially Google's black box where they use machine learning algorithms um, to help train themselves on vast volumes of data. So there are a wide range of contextual signals like device, location, time of day that Google uses to come up with your bid automatically. Um, and the whole goal with this is to tailor the settings uh, for your business objectives. So there are a few things that you need. Number one, uh, you need conversion tracking set up. Number two, you need to have conversion values assigned. So what this means is if you are in e-commerce and you sell products online, you need to make sure that that revenue value from those sales uh, is getting passed through to Google Ads. And if your business um, generates leads, um, what you will need to do is you need well, you will need to assign values to those leads for the system to be able to optimize itself. And the last thing that you need is a steady number of conversions. So what I mean by that is there, there's no minimum number of conversions technically required. However, for the system to be able to optimize and optimize itself quickly, the more conversions that you have, the quicker the system is able to learn and adjust. And so this chart right here is for a different bidding method, which is maximize conversions. It's the, the little brother of maximize conversion value, if you will. And it just shows here that uh, the number of conversions in the past 30 days, if you have 30 in the past 30 days, the learning period will be very slow, um, which could lead to wasting some significant money. However, if you have a lot of conversions like this right here, 500, the learning period is very fast. So how does maximize conversion value work? Well, maximize conversion value bidding will attempt to generate the most conversion value for a given budget, as we said before. It uses your historical performance and evaluates the contextual signals present at auction. And it automatically finds an optimal bid for you, uh, for your ad, each time it's eligible to appear. A common misconception that I hear with maximize conversion value is, well, won't the system just optimize for your products that are the most expensive? So in this example, product A is sold for $5 and product B is sold for $50. So won't maximize conversion value just allocate a lot of budget for product B and not product A? And the answer is no, because that does not factor in the probability of a sale. So let's say the system predicts that product A has a high likelihood of being sold um, and can actually generate more sales, more top line revenue, if you will, um, than product B. So the system would actually allocate more money uh, for product A. So the, the next thing that I want to discuss is this option right here, which is set a target return on ad spend. 
So this is from Google. When you're using maximized conversion value without a target row asset, we will aim to spend your budget to maximize conversion value for your campaigns. When you're using maximized conversion value with a target row asset, we will help get as much conversion value as possible at that target return on ad spend. All right, so that's a mouthful. Those definitions sound very similar, so let me break it down for you. So with maximized conversion value with no target return on ad spend set, the system is trying to generate the most revenue or the most conversion value for the budget that you have. So let's say your budget is uh, $100, okay? And you can see here with this chart that it's a, it's a steady flow of spend throughout the day from 8 a.m. to noon to 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. But in the final few hours of the day, um, the system still has a, or the, the campaign still has a lot of money to work with. So to maximize the conversion value or maximize the revenue that your business gets from that budget, um, it might actually look to spend that whole hundred dollars. And so that spend might not be the most efficient, but it will maximize the total number or the total conversion value that you see. Now, on the other hand, let's look at um, when you do have a target ROAS or tar target return on ad spend set. So you can see, yes, there's a steady flow of spend throughout the day, but let's say the system does not believe that between 8 p.m. and midnight, there's a likelihood that people will convert on your website, right? So in this example, it actually does not spend your, your full budget. You, you gave it guardrails from an efficiency standpoint and, and Google saying, hey, we don't think that we're going to be able to achieve that from 8 p.m. to midnight. And so we're only going to spend a, a small percentage of your remaining budget. So that's one of the big differences. So when you don't have a target return on ad spend set, the system is more likely to spend your full budget to maximize the conversion value. When you do have one set, um, that is not the case. Uh, the system uses that target return on ad spend that you set as guardrails and it tries to keep that in mind throughout the entire day. So here's a here's a, um, a quick um, contrast between no target return on ad spend set and when you do have a target return on ad spend set and when I believe um, it's beneficial for you to use each of these. So I would recommend not setting a, tar a target return on ad spend if it is a newer campaign or the campaign has little historical data. And the reason for that is because you might not actually know what a good target return on ad spend is for that campaign. Um, another, another bullet here is you know the budget that you want to spend. So on the previous slide, um, you saw that we spent the full budget. And so let's say you really wanted to spend that $100 per day. You're more likely to do that when you do not set a target return on ad spend. The next reason is, well, let's just say that you want to see what Google is capable of. Um, so you don't want to provide any insights to Google on what the performance should be. You just want to see what the best it can do is. So in that example, maybe you do not set a target return on ad spend. Um, and the last bullet here is, conversion value, right? So the total conversion value that you generate is greater uh, than the potential efficiency gains that you will see. So you put a higher value on the, the top line revenue or the conversion value that you see over potential efficiency. Now, it's kind of the opposite here. Um, set a target return on ad spend with the campaign has a lot of historical data. Uh, you can make an informed decision on what that T ROAS should be. Um, next up, uh, you want to put some guardrails in for efficiency. Next, you're okay with underspending with your budget. And lastly, uh, you put a, a greater emphasis on efficiency over receiving the most potential conversion value. So I always look at, look at it like this. I, I feel like the end goal is to have an idea for how your campaign will perform. Um, and so that you can set guardrails uh, in it so that you are maximizing the efficiency of the campaign. But typically to start, most people will not set a target return on ad spend because they just don't have the, the data to make an informed decision. Okay, so the big question is, is maximized conversion value bidding a good option for you inside of your search and shopping campaigns? 
I've run a lot of different bid strategies and I do believe that maximize conversion values is one of your best options inside of Google ads with your search and your shopping campaigns like Performance Max. But the only way to know for sure is to try it out inside of your account. So in the comments below, I'm interested to see if you are running maximize conversion value bidding, are you satisfied with the results that you're getting? And if you're not, what are some of the reasons that are holding you back from making the change? I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, I have a free gift that I want to give you. It's my seven day online marketing jumpstart. If you've ever asked yourself the question, where do I begin? How do I get started marketing my business online? This is a document for you. It's completely free. It's a simple PDF. You can complete it in one week. And after you do, you'll have more confidence that you can market your business online by yourself. You don't need to hire an agency. Um, and your website will have a solid foundation for marketing uh, for months and years to come. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time.